Good morning, Rockbrook. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here today. Uh, and while I can't see those of you who are watching us on the internet, it's great to have you with us today as well, whatever today might be for you. Uh, if you are in attendance, please go ahead and sign the attendance uh, booklet that's in your pew. If you're watching us online, please register your attendance, so to speak, with us. Uh, drop a comment, uh, give us a like. Um, please feel free to share this worship service with anyone who you feel would be moved uh, or who it could help reach or who just might enjoy it. Uh, we just love to have you with us and we really appreciate you being with us today. Uh, we've got a few announcements. Uh, this is running to the end of March, so this is running to the very tail end of your opportunity to get a discounted Camps at Fontanelle, the Sunshine and Guardian Angel camps are still 50% off if you register by the end of this month. Uh, so if you have children or grandchildren who are of camp age, it's a great opportunity. Uh, our garage sale is coming up in a few months. We will be accepting small items starting on April 1st. Uh, if you've got furniture or really big things that you want to donate to the church's garage sale, please hold off until June 1st and give us a call so we can kind of coordinate that uh, with you. We have some CPR first aid and AED training coming up uh, on Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, everyone in this service can probably uh, speak firsthand to how important uh, this training is and what a great opportunity it will be to actually take some. Uh, so it's about $45 per person uh, contact Teresa in the church office if you want to sign up for that training. Uh, Palm Sunday is coming up on April 10th. We will be having a ham dinner following the 1045 service. Uh, it will be put on by the youth. They have a free will donation offering to help support their activities. Um, we have moved the Easter egg hunt for the kids to follow the ham dinner. Uh, so then that will kind of all operate in one big block. Um, hopefully it'll fit in people's schedules better. It uh, gives the kids an opportunity to have a proper Sunday school for uh, Palm Sunday, which I don't know about the rest of you. I remember that being one of the more fun Sunday school days, so that should be good for them as well. Um, finally, uh, we have a table out with a, a blue and yellow tablecloth and sunflowers. If you have the opportunity and feel moved by the Spirit, light a candle and say a prayer for the war in Ukraine. Uh, if you want to send money or resources, uh, a good place uh, is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, there is information in the bulletin and uh, online for how to fill out your checks to UMCOR uh, and make sure that that money goes uh, into the Ukraine fund uh, and helps take care of those people. Um, my boss uh, is a foster for an international student from the Ukraine and uh, so her parents are, are involved in this. Her father's in Odessa. Um, her mother didn't have anyone to travel with her, so my boss actually went to Europe. Uh, he is in Germany with her now, so he has told us firsthand that there is a lot of fear and confusion um, among the refugees as they're trying to deal with their situation of having to flee their country and trying to figure out what they can do uh, to make it until they can get back home. And so having resources uh, sent to organizations that are organizing, that are handling volunteers and making sure that they're taken care of uh, is pretty important. Uh, any other announcements, Pastor? All right. Please stand as you're able and join me for our call to worship based on Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. The Lord has inclined his ear to me. The snares of death encompassed me. I suffered distress and anguish. 
The Lord has gone his ear to me. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. The Lord has gone his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. And join us in our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's in your hymnal number 140. Jesus, 
the Prince of Peace. Amen. Lord, we pray for us here in this country. We pray as we never know quite what we're going to run into from day to day. Uh, what, what are we in short supply of? What price is going to go up and, and tap into our, our family budget once again? What, what situation will lie around the corner that needs you to help us, Lord? that we may give it the proper attention and offer the proper response. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are working to keep people from being ill. And we pray for all those who support them. We pray for those who are working long hours in that effort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are our friends, who are members of our church, others around us who are continuing to rehab, who are continuing physical therapy, who are still working on their health and getting around and feeling better. Lord, we pray for them, we pray for those who are helping them, and we pray for their friends and family who love and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who maintain our peace, for those in service to our country, for our armed forces, for those who support them. And we pray also for their family, their friends, whose job it is to stay at home, keep the home fires burning, and wait and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for our church here at Rockbrook, all of those wonderful announcements that Brian read for us this morning, all of those activities that are happening, all of the planning, all of the, uh, all of the figuring out, all of the, the making the phone ring at your house and seeing how, if you will be able to step up and help with some of those things. We pray for all of the ways that we can be Christ's witnesses, Christ's hands, Christ's body for ourselves and for those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now let's pray together the wonderful words of prayer that the Master taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the scripture. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. And our gospel reading for today comes from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel message continues our look at Holy Week, Jesus' last days, which took place during the Passover celebration in Jerusalem. A Passover was the principal act of salvation in the Old Testament. Its commemoration was the height of the religious year in Israel. The Passover celebration, like all worship celebrations, is a willing putting aside a willing suspension of our disbelief. The Passover liturgy invites us to experience a different reality. It invites us to join in an ancient event where we can experience God personally. John's Gospel offers stories of Jesus at times of three different Passovers. During the first of these, Jesus was in Jerusalem. He cleansed the temple, he drove out the money changers and vendors with a whip, and we found that Jesus was all about focusing on God and worshiping God properly. Watching him, his disciples remembered what was written by the prophet Zechariah, zeal for your house will consume me. And then speaking of his body as a temple, Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. After Jesus' resurrection, his disciples recalled those words. The second recorded time that Jesus celebrated the Passover, he was closer to his home in Galilee, and he preached in a field. And after he was done preaching, he fed 5,000 people. Jesus was also about teaching God's ways and taking care of people and living in God's loving abundance. It was at this time that Jesus described himself as the bread of life. Then his third time in Jerusalem, that's the one that we read about today, we're told that Jesus' hour had come. 
Before this, Jesus' final hour had been foretold, denied, misunderstood, but now it's here. Now is the time of Jesus' final act of servanthood, final act of fellowship, a final farewell meal, final words of hope, final words of love, and a final hour to pray. Compared to the other Gospels, John gives a different significance to these final hours of Jesus during Passover. Instead of linking it to the Seder meal, John links it to the slaughter of the Passover lambs, as we read about in Exodus. Jesus' hour had come, but he faced this final hour chin up. The psalmist wrote, the snares of death encompassed me. I suffered distress and anguish, but you delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. Therefore, I will call on the Lord as long as I live. So please understand that Jesus did not give up his life. He gave away his life. Although he had the power not to do so, he gave his life to us, for us. Thomas Aquinas called God the source without a source. This is where Jesus' power came from. But Jesus laid aside that power and became a servant. He laid aside his clothing, got on the floor, and washed his disciples' feet. The same verb, meaning to lay aside, is used again later in the chapter when Jesus asked Peter, Will you lay aside your life for me? Jesus did not choose to give up his life, but he chose to live his life fully, to love fully, to love us fully, all the way to the end, regardless of the consequences. So among his final acts, he washed his disciples' feet. Foot washing was a gesture of hospitality. To this day, foot hospitality is a key virtue in that part of the world. It was sacramental, sacred, like the washing of baptism. Now, as dress shoes go, these are all right. But I can tell you how good it feels when I get home and I kick them off. I think most of us can relate to that. But I can't imagine how much better it would feel after a day of walking around wearing those flimsy first century sandals. Basically, a, a piece of leather strapped to your foot to keep your foot from getting cut out. To take those off and to have your feet washed and anointed by the Master. This is a reminder of how special our relationship with Jesus is. Jesus who gave all to us. Jesus asks us to place ourselves and our lives in his hands. We shouldn't worry so much about the how and the why we came to be here. We need only rejoice in the fact that we are here, that we have a home here with Jesus. And then we must come to terms with the fact that this relationship is on Jesus' terms, terms of love, love through service, Love for Jesus that leads us to follow. Love by emulating his example. Love through participation with others. Love that is put into action. And love that loves one another, everyone around us. So let us, let everyone know that we are Jesus' disciples by our love for one another by the love that we put into service and faith and hope and action. In Jesus' name, amen.
as we go forth from this place, we remember who we are. We are the people who call ourselves Christian, and that means being a part of Christ's ongoing life and love and mission in the world, going forth on Christ's terms, and Christ's terms are terms of love, love through service, love through faith, love through hope. Lord, help us to keep the faith, to keep the hope, and to be people of love as we go our way. Bless us on our way and let us know that you, our master, are with us each and every step along life's road. In Jesus' name, amen.